Hello, this is Michael Osborne with WebEcator. In this video, we're going to explore session state management in ASP.NET Core 1.0. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Mike Brind. Mike agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL that you see here. So let's begin by talking about what has changed, and then we'll take a look at some code and look at how to uh, leverage the changes that have been built into Core 1.0. In earlier versions of ASP.NET, session state management was implemented through an intrinsic object, which existed automatically as part of your application. So when you create an ASP.NET application in your code, you could reference the session object and you could put things in there and take them out. You also had session start events and session end events. Now, in ASP.NET Core 1.0 or ASP.NET 5, whatever you want to call it, um, basically what they're trying to do is take a lot of uh, things that are not always necessary and pull them out of the template and make them pluggable components. Session state is one of those pieces. So by default in ASP.NET 5, when you create a application, you do not automatically have session state. You have to actually bring session state in. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to bring that in and how to use it. So in order to use session management, uh, first of all, we need to bring the NuGet projects in. Now there's actually two parts that we need. One is the ASP.NET session NuGet package. The other is the extensions caching memory. Uh, caching in memory is our persistence mechanism for our session uh, variables. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go over to my project here, or my solution rather. Now you could use the NuGet package manager to bring these packages into scope, but I'm going to take kind of a shortcut. I'm going to go edit my project.json file, and I'm just going to add these packages in here real quick. Whoops. Let's see here if I can get it lined up. We're going to plug that in. So you'll notice I'm adding the ASP.NET session and extensions caching memory. And I'm going to save that. Now once you do that, if you go back and look in your references, you will see they will have been added or they will be adding right now. There is ASP.NET sessions and there is the extensions caching memory. So now we have all the parts we need in order to do session management. So now that the packages are available, the next thing we need to do is basically opt into using them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our startup class, into our configure services section. So let me find my startup class here. There's startup.cs. And I'm going to go find my configure services section here. Notice that we do an add MVC. And directly after adding MVC, I'm going to plug in add caching and add session. Now you'll notice to the session I pass some options. I specify 30 minute time span for my timeout and I specify a cookie name which is dot my application. So at this point I've included all the packages necessary into the solution. I've registered them as services. Now I need to tell the application to use those session management features. And in order to do that I'm going to go into my configure I'm sorry my configure method here in my startup. Now here's the deal. I need to be sure and add this before I do anything with MVC. So normally what I will do is put it right at the very top and I'll just plug in app.use session. So now at this point I've got everything in there. Now I can go into my controller and start adding some session variables or session state variables into the session object. So let's go in and use session state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my controllers here and I only have one home controller, but that's fine. The first thing I'm going to do is I need to add in a using statement. I need to include the ASP.NET uh, HTTP namespace. Now at this point, I'm ready to actually start adding some stuff into my session state. So I'm going to come down here. We're going to go to index. And before we return the view, what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of values into session state. We're going to add in our name value, which is Mike, and our age, which is 21. These are now being pers persisted in memory in the session state object that we brought into scope. Now I can go into, for example, in my about here, and I could retrieve those variables from the context session uh, using the appropriate methods. Now I want to point something out here. When you add or remove things into the session, you'll notice, and let me highlight this real quick, if you go to HTTP context dot session dot, you'll notice you actually have three add methods. You have a 
uh, add, I'm sorry, set, I moved to the wrong place there, a set int32, a set string, and a set. Now let me explain what's going on here. Microsoft's rationale was that the majority of the time when you put things into session state, it's either a string or an integer. So they gave you methods to automatically add those values in. Now, behind the scenes, in both cases, what it's doing is it's converting it into a byte array. If you want to persist something other than a string or an integer, you will need to convert it into a byte array and then pass it to the set method in order to persist it. For example, suppose I want to persist a Boolean. Well, in order to persist a Boolean, I suppose I could, on the fly, convert it into a byte array. But obviously, if I'm going to be doing certain data types more than once, it's in my best interest to go ahead and build a simple class to take care of that. So that's essentially what I've done here. I have a class called Session Extensions. Now, if you look at Session Extensions, if I can open it up here, um, you'll notice all this does is it has two methods, a get Boolean and a set Boolean. And in each case, what we're doing is we're uh, either converting to or from a byte array. Now, once I've built that session extensions class, I can then use that method. In other words, I could go back into my home controller here, and I could do a dot set uh, Boolean. And there's my Boolean example right there. And I could then pass it a, a value. We'll call it, uh, I don't know, just call it bool, whatever and we could specify whether it's true or false and there we go we've now persisted a boolean so again if you're going to do any data types other than int or string you're going to need to either manually convert them on the fly into a byte array or you can just build a simple little class to uh, take care of that for you now in addition to setting and getting values there's two other methods you need to be aware of the first one if i can bring it up here to be session is the remove method. This allows us to remove a key by passing it a name. For example, I might remove bool, something along that line. That allows me to clear things out of my session. In addition, there is a dot clear method which will clear all of the uh, values out of the session object completely, completely wipe the whole thing out. Okay, I'd like to again thank Mike Bryan for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL you see here for some other articles related to ASP.NET. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.